The following program is sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network. Welcome to Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're touring the Miller Coors Brewery here in Milwaukee to learn more about the steam fitter's role in the brewing process. But first, let's get started with Ken Litke from Miller Coors Brewing Company. Well, Ken, this is awesome. We're visiting the Miller Coors Brewing Company here in the city that made beer famous. And I gotta tell you, I'm so excited because I get to learn the process for brewing my favorite beverage. But before we learn more about how beer is made, I'd like to start with a little bit of the history of the Miller Brewing Company here in Milwaukee. Well, Stu, first of all, thank you for joining us. It's a beautiful day here on this campus. We're sitting on uh, 82 acres, 79 buildings with a tremendously rich history here. In fact, right across the road, you'll notice Plank Road Brewery. Frederick Miller came over from Germany in 1855, believe it or not, with a strain of yeast in his pocket that he started up the beginning of this great brewery and some of the great products that we make today. And so it has evolved over time. We produce about seven and a half million barrels a year here. But in addition, we're Miller Coors, and so we have eight different large breweries within the United States, one of which resides in Golden, Colorado. And some great history there as well, because it was only 25 or so years later that Adolf Coors came across the pond from Prussia and started a brewery in Golden, Colorado, which became the Coors Brewing Company. Sounds like it was a natural match made in heaven there. I tell you, you speak of heaven, I come to work every day and we get to make beer here. That's not a bad gig. <laughs> but uh, it was in about 2008 where the two companies came together to form Miller Coors. And so now all of the brands underneath that company are included. And you say all of the brands, because right. it's not just Miller or Coors or Miller Light and Coors Light. There right. are, I'd venture to say, hundreds of different brands that you yeah. guys now brew. There certainly are hundreds of different brands, but you know the staple and the engine that drives the train continues to be our Coors and Coors Light brands and our Miller and Miller Light brands. So that is absolutely the foundation of our business. But as the beer industry has evolved, as the consumers have changed, we've made tremendous strides at new product innovation. We have Red's Apple Ales. We've been with the Leinenkugel brands for many, many years. In fact, uh, one of my favorite new products we've come out with recently is the grapefruit shanty under the Leinenkugel umbrella. So it's a great breakfast beer stew that you might have to try. Oh, I'm definitely going to try it. I love grapefruit juice and I love beer. Another match made in heaven. And you know, one of the things that I like about Miller Coors that I've heard through different media outlets is your commitment to environmental stewardship. I've worked in other big companies in my career and I will say they were very good at sustainability. You can't compete in today's market unless you have an eye and an ear towards sustainability. Again, our consumers demand it and they should. But I've never worked at an organization that was this good at sustainability, whether that's water conservation, energy conservation, emissions reductions, waste to landfill. A couple of highlights here I'm very proud of is just this past year, we became zero waste to landfill. So whether it's the brewery or the corporate side, we put this much waste into a landfill. It's just tremendous. When it comes to water conservation, 
it wasn't but a couple of years ago, we were using four barrels of water to produce one barrel of beer. Today we're approaching three barrels of water for one barrel of beer, which has been a huge reduction in water consumption coming from that great lake of Michigan. And you should be very proud of it. And what makes me proud as a Wisconsin citizen is that we are sitting next to one of the largest bodies of fresh water in the world. It'd be so easy for Miller to say, ah, let's just tap that resource. We don't have to worry about water conservation. But no, you go to the other extreme and say, despite that fact, despite our location, we're still gonna be concerned with it and to become landfill free. That is amazing, something you should be proud of. And you know, when I think about the Miller Brewing Company and its history, and I consider it an iconic entity here, not only in the Milwaukee area and to the people of Milwaukee, but our great state of Wisconsin and our nation as a whole and even beyond. I mean, when you think of Milwaukee, you think of the brewers, you think about Miller Park, you think about Miller Brewing and as general. When I drive down the highway to go to a brewer's game, I see the Miller sign on top of the building. And that's what blew me away when I got here. I thought that was Miller, that big brick building. But you're saying 82 acres, it's really a full-blown campus here, yeah. full of training, technology, uh, all the high automation that goes into brewing. But at the end of the day, it seems to me, it still comes back to the people doing the work here, the brewers and all the people that make this plant run. I've been here a little over a year, and one thing I have found is that there is tremendous pride in what this place has been. Over 160 years, we've had generations of employees work here. In fact, we have a 40-year veteran with uh, four of his children working here together. I've also celebrated over the last two years over 50 people that have celebrated 40 years of service here. Wow. So I've met many people that still work here that have been here since they were 18. Now, the beer industry has gone through tremendous change. And with that, we're continuing to try to find ways to be competitive uh, and to remain viable for the next 160 years. But what I've always said is the equipment doesn't run itself. The 600 folks that come in here uh, on all hours of the night, on all days of the week, as we brew beer here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because people like used to continue to remain thirsty. Oh yeah, and we love the product. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. And beer is good for you. There's a song about beer is good, I'm sure of it. <laughs> I'm definitely, if there isn't, there should be. <laughs> so the truth is, is we're constantly trying to find ways to inspire and empower our workforce because in the end, it is the most important part of this entire brewery. Now with that said, uh, there are some tremendous careers in the brewing industry. We have a trade and craft workforce that includes machinists, includes electricians, includes steam fitters. Now, there's miles and miles of pipes, uh, matrix valves, well over 2,000 valves in this plant. I'm sure that's way low. And the steam fitters are an integral part of keeping that operation viable. We worry about spilling beer. Now, isn't that sad when you spill your beer? It's horrible. But if we spill significant amounts of beer because our pipes are leaking, our valves aren't working, that costs significant money and it has a huge impact on our business. And the steam fitters have a really important role in that, for example. So we've been talking about how do we unleash our steam fitters. I know you'll be working with Angelo here walking the plant. Say hi to Angelo, he's a wonderful man and that steam fitter group is tremendous, and uh, ask him uh, if we're figuring out how to unleash the steam fitters. I'll certainly do that. I'll pass along your regards, and as a matter of fact, I think we're gonna get started with him here shortly. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on, sharing your knowledge on Miller Brewing, Miller Coors, and the great brewery that's gonna continue to evolve and move forward to the future. Thank you, Kevin. Stu, it's a pleasure, thank you.
Wow, Angelo, this is a really cool room in here. I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at, but I assume the brewing process begins somewhere around here? It does. Actually, it begins 12 floors above us because the grain comes in off the rail cars from our suppliers, and then we take that grain and we send it up to the top of the brew house, which is 12 floors, and then we store it in our silos until we're ready to use it. Now, what are these kettles that I'm looking at? Well, these are our lauder tons, and what we do in these lauder tons is we take a mixture of the grains and water, and we have what we call rakes, and we mix that mixture until we get like an oatmeal. Okay, and then from there, does it go down into these kettles? Yes, and it goes down to these brew kettles. What we do then is we put it in there, we get it to a boil, and we add our hops. Okay, and how do you get it to a boil? Well, funny you should ask, we use steam. <laughs> oh, and that's why you have steam fitters here. Yes. And I understand from talking to Ken that you guys play an integral role in the brewing process. Really help keep the flow moving yep. from, uh, you know, throughout this facility. How I look at it is anything that's inside a pipe, whether you have water, steam, air, chemical, we, we help that process along. And, you know, as I look around, there's stainless steel, there's copper, I'm sure there's brass, maybe other metals. I mean, you have to be pretty highly skilled, highly trained to even work with that. You do, and we have 19 steam fitters here, wow. and all of them have high skills, and they are all good welders. They work on stainless. Some of them are certified welders to work on different metals, as you said. You also need special training for that. Sure, and it's all food grade, so I know yeah. there's special things you need to be trained at back at 601. Yes. So from here, where does it go? After it leaves our kettles, we send the beer across the street, but underneath the street, to our fermenting area. Oh wow, so you're in charge of that, going underneath the street. Well, there's piping that goes in valves that goes underneath the street, and then it goes to our fermenting area. And an interesting fact about this brewery is that the beer crosses the street four times from the time it comes in as grain until the time it goes out either in a bottle or can. Oh, that's an interesting fact. Hey, can we go over to that building, take a yes, look at that? Yes, we can head over there next. Well, Stu, before we continue on our brewing process into fermenting, I wanted to stop at our shop and show you some of the things that we work on to keep the beer flowing here at Miller. Boy, look at this stuff. What are these, valves? Yes, they are. What we call these right here are, are matrix valves. And these matrix valves are very complex, and we have over 1,500 of these in the brewery. Wow, holy cow. That's substantial. Yeah, this, this is actually a small one, but some of the stuff that we do, if we have a seal that's blown on this, we have quality control issues, and we also have beer loss, which we're trying to m limit here. Sure, Ken was stressing the importance of environmental stewardship, and that really starts inside to saving the product. And I, learning that there are a lot of moving components, starting at the valves and as the beer flows through the facility, that all have a life expectancy, and sooner yeah. or later that's going to wear out. So steam fitter's role is to keep that operating? It is, and, and that's what we do here. And this is just a small portion of that. Um, this is a valve we found out in the, in the brewing process that had no liner in it. So obviously it's not doing anything. We're losing product here. Oh, so it had a liner similar to the small one yep. right here. Like this, yep. And that just wore right out. Away. Boy, you'd have a lot of waste coming yep. out of there. So you guys then have to shut down the line as quickly as possible, fix that, and that's where that training and experience comes in because yep. you guys know how to deal with the situation as it arises. Yes, they had a problem with a certain piece of equipment and he went and troubleshot it and narrowed it down to this valve. And these are just the valves. You guys do a lot of welding as well. We do. We do a lot of stainless welding. We do a lot of MIG and TIG welding here also. So boy, it just is never ending. And the role of the steam fitter is becoming clear in my eyes that it's very integral in the brewing process. Yes, and we never run out of work here. Okay, Stu, as we walk to fermenting, I thought we'd take a shortcut and point out something to you very interesting. Where we're at right now, this is the caves. They used to take big blocks of ice and store the kegs here before refrigeration. Wow, is this ever cool. So these are those caves we hear about. And would this go back to 1855? Yeah, this is the oldest part of the brewery, and this is part of the original structure. It's a great case in point of how the industry continues to evolve and really going from cave cool storage to refrigeration, a great yep. case in point of why we need steam fitters. Yep, exactly.
Wow, what a beautiful view. And there's Miller Park in the background? That sure is. Okay, so close proximity there, right to the brewers. This yep. is awesome. Now, are these the fermenters you were talking about? They are, and um, once we came across the street from the brew house, we sent our beer over here to the fermenters, we add our yeast, and this is where we let them ferment, seven to 14 days. Okay, and again, it's recipe specific for whatever variety that you're brewing. Now, how large are these? These are 8,000 barrels. 8,000 barrels, and it looks like you have, geez, almost 30 of these fermenters? Yeah, I think we have 28. And then over there, are those also fermenters, those two? They sure are, those are for our Coors Light product. Okay, so again, different varieties, you keep things separate. Now, as I look here, I see some piping. What is the role of a steam fitter on the outside here? On the outside, we don't have much. We have little equipment inside these cupolas here, but our main work is below these fermenters. We have large series of piping and valves, and we have to maintain that equipment. Well, you know, as we're walking through here, and as you've been elaborating, there are a lot of different liquids, different chemicals, different gases. They, a steam fitter is responsible for at this facility. Yes, just on these fermenters alone, we have to deal with CO2, and also we have to clean these tanks on a regular basis, and what we use to clean it is chlorine dioxide, which is very dangerous, and we have caustic, and we have to maintain those systems. Sure, and I noticed that there's ammonia used for refrigeration, and that speaks volumes to the knowledge, the training that a steam fitter needs to work here. It for sure does, and a lot of that training we get during our apprenticeship to work with these chemicals and these products very safely so we can be able to go home at the end of the day. Sure, and great peace of mind for Miller Coors as well as the community as a whole. So what's the next step in the process? Oh, well, we're gonna head to the finishing area now, Stu. Well, let's go do that. Okay. Wow, now this is an impressive room. It sure is. This is what we call our finishing area. And what happens here is the beer comes from our fermentation tanks and comes over here and we filter it. And so as I look around here, this has got to be a glory shot when you're talking about steam fitting in a brewery. There are pipes and valves everywhere. This is it. This is the epitome of what a steam fitter will do. Here we have some of those valves that I showed you in the shop. Sure. And here's a flow meter, which our instrumentation group takes care of. They have to calibrate these every so often so they make sure the proper amount of beer is flowing through these pipes. And also we have temperature probes, level probes, all very high-tech stuff. Yeah, and that's what really what impresses me here is that there's so much science that goes into it. There's the instrumentation room you talked about, the, the different technical nature of brewing. I had no idea it, that it took steam fitters to do all that. It really is. I mean, steam fitting is just not turning pipe wrenches or handling hand tools. It's much more advanced than that these days, and you need that knowledge and education that you would get in an apprenticeship. Sure, it really is eye-opening to me. I love visiting this facility. Now from here, does it go to packaging? Yes, after the beer is filtered, we send it to package release tanks where it waits to be sent to a packaging line. And once it's sent to the packaging line, it goes to our filler. It's either put in a bottle, can, or keg. After that, if the beer needs to be pasteurized, it'll go through the pasteurizer. From the pasteurizer, it'll be sent to the packers and they'll put it in the carrier, whether it's six pack, 12 pack, 24 pack, whatever you want, variety you want. After that, then it goes right to our shipping where it gets on the trucks and shipped out to your local establishment. And in my case, from there, right into my fridge, a nice ice cold beer on a hot summer day. That's a perfect place for it. Well, I really appreciate you coming on today's show, walking us through the brewing process and especially the role of a steam fitter. It's been eye opening to me and I'm sure our viewers have a better appreciation for what you do. Well, it's been my pleasure, Stuart. Are you ready for a career choice that rewards you for your hard work, compensates you for your knowledge and willingness to learn, pays you more money, provides better benefits, and offers a comfortable retirement? Then contact your local Steamfitters 601 Training Center and attend our next trade orientation. You'll learn about our complete five-year apprenticeship program that's designed to help you progress from the basic on-the-job skills to the top of the welding and HVACR service industry. You also don't need a big down payment to start your Steamfitter training. Just a good work ethic that includes showing up on time, working hard, and working smart. And better yet, you're well paid through your apprenticeship and you earn more as you learn more. 
So make a career choice that's full of rewards and contact Steamfitters Local 601 today for more information. Welcome back to Build in Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith, and so far in today's show, we've been learning how beer is brewed at the Miller Coors Brewing Company here in Milwaukee. Now let's catch up with Ed Tan to learn more about the steam fitter's role in the process. This room's pretty spectacular with all the different components. This is our on-site shop at Miller Coors and our storage area where we prefab a lot of stuff. That... Sure, well this whole facility, this property, 82 acres, yeah. 79 buildings, I can imagine that you need a shop this big with how integral the role of the steam fitters is in the brewing process. And really what I wanted to catch up with you was to learn more about what Butters Fettings role is here and why Miller Coors contracts with your company. We've been fortunate that Miller Coors has allowed us to, to be here for uh, close to 40 years. And uh, we supply good people from 601 and we're capable of doing anywhere from the steam fitting to refrigeration service. We'll have uh, a number of small jobs going and then on occasion we'll have a, a major project and we're, we're able to fluctuate crews and manpower between small and a larger project. And what I've learned is there's a lot of specialized welding. You need a highly skilled workforce to do it. Absolutely. Uh, we put the boilers in here a number of years back so you have your high pressure certified welders and with the beer lines there's a lot of sanitary welding going on so specialties and skills are, are needed in everything we do here. And the partnership you have with 601 that must be invaluable in this line of work. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do this without 601. So. Well, everybody we've talked to, and the steam fitters especially, they just love to work here. It's a great work environment. They enjoy what they do. And from a business owner standpoint, I want to get your opinion on what makes a good steam fitter. To become a top-notch steam fitter is primarily desire. You know, it's uh, you need to do the uh, the studying. You need to take advantage when there's training courses going on. You need to practice your skills. It's a number of things, but primarily a, a good work ethic. And that sounds to me like you're saying that comes back to 601 as well, because that training that they provide, that ongoing education, you can learn and better yourself and become more employable. Yeah, you know, 601 has good programs, to, you know, especially on the welding side. They do a, a good job sending the kids to school, but then they get a lot of on-the-job training from the, again, the older foremen uh, that are on site. Sure. The journey workers there passing yeah. on their knowledge. It, it doesn't get any better than that because you can only go so far with book smarts. you got to get out there in the real world and learn. Right. And it seems to me that desire to work, that's a common theme. No matter what you do in any walk of life, you got to have the desire to succeed and work hard for whoever you're employed by. Absolutely. In a steam fitter trade, you got to get dirty here and there and... Uh, there's some nasty jobs you got to do every once in a while, but the, the reward at the end of the day, seeing what you've accomplished and, and earning a pretty good paycheck is, uh, is very rewarding for, for anyone. So. Well, wonderful. I appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your busy schedule to come on today's show. I'm going to catch up with Joe now, one of your steam fitters, right. to learn more about a special project that they just completed. Okay, great. Thank you. Hey Joe, how's it going? Good, Stu. How are you doing? Not bad. I was just talking to Ed. He says you guys keep pretty busy here at Miller Coors. Oh yeah. This is a project we just completed here. Well, that's perfect because what I wanted to do was have you on today's show to shed some light on some of these special projects that your company is responsible for at Miller Coors. Yeah, this is one of them. It's a Red's yeast dosing. We just completed all sanitary welding. The highly skilled steam fitters from Local 601 completed all this piping, setting the equipment. And maybe take us through exactly what this does. Up here is the yeast hopper. The dry yeast comes in and 
super sacks. It's dropped into the top, comes through the bottom, and then this piece of equipment has a venturi, this vacuum cam, draws the powdered yeast in and mixes it with water and forms a slurry. And then it gets pumped across the room to a hydration tank where they add more water to the slurry and it gets pumped across to another building where it's injected into the wart stream before it goes to the fermenters. Okay, and this is all for the FMBs, as they were called, the for, flavored for milk beverages. Yes. Uh, you know, on the way up here, I noticed some guys doing some welding. I think we were in the fermentation room. Were those your guys as well? Yes, they are doing some sanitary welding over there as well. And to me, when I look around, I, I swear the 79 buildings here, I think each and every one of them was built around the piping. I mean, you look up into the ceiling, there are pipes running everywhere. The pipes interconnect the whole brewing process from the brew house to fermenting to finishing to packaging. It all runs through piping. Well, you know, the more I learn about the brewing process, the more appreciation I have for the steam fitters themselves. I mean, when I first started all this, I didn't even know what a steam fitter did. but. Seeing it firsthand and seeing how integrated they are into the brewing process, it's pretty impressive to me. I mean, how many steam fitters do you guys have for these so-called special projects? Well, it varies. I mean, right now we have eight steam fitters on site, but we've had projects where we've had 50 steam fitters on site. Wow. Must be a luxury to have a facility like 601 to provide that manpower. Yeah, it's, it's a very big help to us. We're partners with them. Will they put on specialized courses if there's something special that comes up? Yes, they do. They have a sanitary welding class that they teach this type of welding and you get a certification for it. It's got to be great for a guy like you to know that the manpower coming in is highly skilled, highly trained, they're going to do it right, you don't have to babysit them on a job. Right, and safely. I mean, at Miller, safety is number one. I mean, that is, that is our first job is to be safe, keep our people safe, have them return home the same way they came here. Well, you know, it's great seeing at least one little portion of the brewing process. And I really appreciate you coming on and sharing one of these projects with us. It's been my pleasure. For more information on Building Wisconsin, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com. The preceding program was sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network.